Now we're going to go into each one of them. So first type is going to be your converting assets to expenses. That means that the first type that we're going to go into is our deferral prepaid expense. This is the first one that we are going to discuss. So whenever you actually purchase an asset, right, it is an expenditure that you're doing and we call it a capital expenditure. And that thing pro becomes an asset because it is going to provide you with future benefits. So in assets, you can see over here, we have written shop supplies and unexpired insurance. This is something that is going to be shown on your balance sheet. You have purchased, let's say, shop supplies for the next four months in advance. Now, these shop supplies will be slowly utilized over the four months. You have just purchased them and stocked them currently. You're not going to use them all together on the first day that you have purchased them. You're going to use them gradually with time over the four months. So the concept over here is that you cannot book something as an expense until and unless you utilize it. But these shop supplies, because you have still not utilized them, they are going to be shown as an asset in your balance sheet until and unless you use them. Once you have used these shop supplies. So as supplies and insurance policies are used, or we call this expire, then that asset is going to convert into an expense. So you can see these are your revenue and then this is your expense category. And under your expense category, you have supplies expense. So what has happened over here, that's something that originally became an asset because it is going to provide you with future benefit. Once you have started to use that benefit, you are going to convert that asset simply into an expense. This is the first case, which is your prepaid expense deferral. So you need to remember that whenever you are making any advance expense payment, that expense becomes an asset. For example, we have unexpired insurance over here. So unexpired insurance means that you have purchased, let's say, an insurance policy for one year. Now, you purchased it on 1st January. So first, uh, as soon as you purchase it, after that, that insurance policy is going to um, be implemented for that one whole year. But on 1st January, it is not an expense for you yet because you still need to use that insurance policy. However, once one month has gone by, so January has ended, then you can convert this asset into an expense because you have now utilized one month's insurance policy. Since similarly, when February goes by, you can convert February into an expense because you have utilized another one year out of that policy. Similarly, each month is going to go by and by the last month, you would have utilized all of your unexpired insurance and it would have been converted into your insurance expense. So the main thing that you need to remember is that you cannot book something as an expense until and unless you have used that thing. Now let's look at an example. So purchased various shop supplies such as grease, solvents, nuts and bolts from Kappa Auto Bart. The cost was 1400 due in 30 days. These supplies are expected to meet overnight's needs for three to four months. Now, these auto parts that you have purchased, you have, first thing is you have not paid in cash. You have actually bought it on credit. So what should be the entry? Shop supplies, debit and your um, account payable credit. Shop supplies debit because an asset is increasing because this is an expense that you have paid in advance. You're going to use these shop supplies over a period of three to four months. And why are we crediting ac uh, accounts payable? Because you have still not paid for them. So you have bought this in the form of liability. So this is the entry that we're going to make on February 4th. Now what has happened, let's assume that one month has gone by and you have used 400 of the shop supplies in February. Now because you have used something, it is now an expense. 
so shop supplies was an asset but because you have utilized these shop assets you are supposed to convert this into expense now the double entry for expenses that whenever an expense increases we record it as debit so supplies expense will be debit and what to credit over here you have used these shop supplies so this asset is being converted into an expense the asset is supposed to decrease and the expense is supposed to increase so for that we are going to credit our shop supplies amount so what is happening supplies expense is increasing that's why we are going to debit it and shop supplies are decreasing that's why we are crediting it over here now this means like if we are crediting this what does this mean it means shop supplies have decreased by 400 so shop supplies if they are 1400 currently 1400 minus 400 will give you 1000 so you still have 1000 remaining shop supplies with you so this is what this means that we have this is 1400 i'm going to write it over here minus right there let me just use that so we had 1400 minus 400 and 1000 is the remaining shop supplies now if one month goes by and let's say we use 200 more of shop supplies so the remaining shop supplies balance will be then 800 so you're simply converting asset into an expense in this scenario it's going from your balance sheet into your income statement okay let's see the other scenario now okay now the concept of depreciation is also actually based on this um depreciable assets are physical objects that retain their size and shape but that eventually wear out or become obsolete they are not physically consumed as are assets which is supplies but nonetheless their economic usefulness diminishes over time examples of uh, depreciable assets uh, include buildings and all types of equipment fixtures and furnishings and even railroad tracks so any non current asset an asset that you're going to use for more than a year is a depreciable asset that means that it has a limited years of useful life for example if you buy a car you expect it to run for 10 years or let's say 20 years and after that you will find that the car is not um, performing as it used to because you have used its usefulness and there will come a time when the car will be no longer working and you will just have to scrap it off land is however not viewed as a depreciable asset because it is assumed that it has an unlimited useful life the term depreciation means the systematic allocation of the cost of a depreciable asset to expense over the asset's useful life so the concept of depreciation is actually based on this whole prepaid expense concept why do we book something as an asset because it's going to provide us with future benefit now if we are utilizing that benefit from a non current asset if you're using it then that is basically depreciation and depreciation is an expense so you're converting an asset again into an expense so what's happening we have assets cost uh at which you have purchased the building equipment and as the asset's useful life expires so as you are utilizing that asset you need to convert that asset into an expense once again how do we calculate depreciation cost of the asset divided by estimated useful life this is the straight line method and this is just one of the ways in which depreciation is calculated there are other ways as well Now, overnight purchase its building for thirty six thousand on January twenty second because the building was old. It's estimated remaining useful life is only twenty years. We are going to calculate monthly depreciation over here because all of our questions assume monthly adjustments. So, estimated useful life. How are we going to calculate that? 
uh, for that we are going to multiply this 20 years so this is the duration in which you think that the building is going to last 20 years multiplied by 12 will give you the estimated useful life that is 240 months so 240 months <coughs> will come uh, it's written over here as well will come in the denominator and in the numerator, we have the cost, which is 36,000. So the depreciation charge for one month is 150. And in December, so we're just charging the depreciation for one month. We're going to debit our depreciation expense and we're going to credit accumulated depreciation billing. Now, depreciation expense, we're debiting it because it's an expense account. And when an expense account is recorded, we debit it. Why are we crediting accumulated depreciation account and not using the building account? So when we're calculating depreciation, we do not credit the building account directly. We use a contra account and we accumulate all of the depreciation in that account. So it has the same impact as actually reducing the building value, but we want to keep the building value separate, the historical cost separate, and we want all of the value that is being subtracted to be recorded in another account, which is called a contra account, so that we can calculate the net book value as shown over here. So the building, 36,000, this is always going to remain at its cost, and we're going to minus all of the accumulated depreciation that has been accumulated over all of the years, and get our net book value. So 34,350 is still the usefulness of this building that is left to be utilized. And we have already utilized 1650 of 1650 of um, the usefulness of this building. So you can see that it has the same impact as if we would have credited the amount directly into the building account. It is reducing the uh, value of your building but the only difference is that we open a separate account so that we can show it in this way okay before i go on to the next one i'm going to stop this video